programme is for entertainment purposes. I can't do a sales. 24 hours in a place so haunted that people have refused to stay at Pengersic Castle. <laughs> to most haunted. Pengasit Castle has a multitude of ghosts, sailors in search of lost treasure, two murdered monks, a demon dog, and cries of pitiful souls that have been buried in unhallowed graves. This place has been described as frightening and evil, so much so that people don't want to spend any time here. The most haunted team are spending 24 hours here in search of the truth. Have we bitten off more than we can chew? Pengersic Castle is an ancient fortified building, part of the once great manor that existed in the 12th century. Henry Pengersic, who was the head of the family and was responsible for the construction of the castle, was reputed to have been a violent man who dealt in the black arts. It's thought he murdered a monk and wounded the vicar of Bruges and then married Engrina Godolphin. It's said Henry and Ingrina are two of the ghosts that refuse to leave their home. The present owners, who live very happily alongside the past owners, also believe the ghosts from a wrecked ship called the St Anthony roam the gardens in search of buried treasure. It's a place of energy, of myths and legends. And of course, we're in Cornwall, and Cornwall is a place of myths, legends, trolls and goblins, pixies, and of course, ghosts. And they're all around here. What is legend? I mean, sometimes legend has usually got a, an element of truth in it. The only thing that I can say is that there's four and a half acres here with about 5,000 years of history. Things always happen here. You know, you come in, you do some research, and, and it can be visual, sounds, even smells. A whole range of, of supernatural activity seems to occur in this one, one place. There are all sorts of ghosts around here, many stories, some of them without any authentication at all. Others, of course, that people have actually seen and reported. The ghost of a lady dressed in white has been seen coming through these walls and then disappearing in the middle of the room. Also, a little boy likes to tug at people's clothing. He's been seen and felt on many occasions. Now, there's another story concerning the white lady who wanders in the bedrooms. They believe it to be Engrina, but she didn't live here. She lived up the road when the house was up there. So I thought, well, why should she haunt this place? And then, of course, I asked the question, did they use the same stone from that house to build this one? And they did. So there's every possibility that the ghost of Engrina actually came with the stonework and is now in situ here and haunting the new house. This is the bedroom, and it's said to be the most haunted room in the castle. A woman in great pain is seen at the window. A spectre walks through the walls and then towards the bed and just vanishes. A murdered man walks around angrily. But the most bizarre sight is that of a demon dog with red eyes who just appears at the fireplace. They're known more up country in the north as bar guests and padfoots. They're harbingers of death, only seen when an impending death is about to happen in a family. When we first came here about four years ago, we started to um, douse the bedroom. And altogether, we found 28 presences spread over a period of 500 years. 
between 1500 and uh, 1814 was the last uh, was the latest one. A 13-year-old girl lost her life here. She fell from the top of the battlements. It's said that her ghost has returned where she lures young men to the top, dancing towards the edge. I use my rods to pick up a presence. And with her, um, she got me so far, and then all of a sudden I started spinning, and spinning so fast that um, I just couldn't get out of it, and then I came to a dead stop and started spinning the other way. And it was one of those at sort of a speed that you just couldn't possibly do it if you tried because you'd fall down dizzy. But since found her, what she likes to do is to get to dancing and then go up the stairs back up onto the battlements. And in this way, she can be a bit dangerous. The ghosts of sailors have been seen wandering around the grounds looking for their stolen treasure. Also, two monks that were murdered have been seen wandering around this very spot. The profession round here, of course, was wrecking ships. And then after they were wrecked, any sailors that were still alive, of course, were murdered and buried close to the scene. And then all the treasure, of course, was brought, especially in this area, here to Pengersig. And of course, because of that, because of the death, murder that went on around here, there have been many reported sightings of sailors wandering around the area of the coast and even up here. So perhaps some of them made their way up here, were found and had their throats cut. Under my feet are the bodies of several unidentified people that were buried in unhallowed graves. Their cries can still be heard on dark winter nights. All of these sightings, plus strange lights, are what make Pengasit Castle a very strange place. I do not like day or night. I don't like going to the what we call a plague graveyard. I don't like the atmosphere in it. I don't like the vibrations I get in it. Personally, I can be there, and I suddenly get very unnerved. There's an atmosphere. It's very, very uncomfortable. And I actually, at times, planned on spending some time there, and I find that after about five minutes, I've had enough. I want to get out. Just do not like the place. Now, this place is supposed to be quite an evil place. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, there's various vicious murders and killings associated with the history of the place. And there's also a connection to a guy called John Militant, who apparently studied alchemy and the black arts, not to mention the fact that there's supposedly a trapped demon within this room and stories of what's been termed as a devil dog, um, a black dog with red eyes. There are two murders associated with this room. Both of them are women and they've both been seen at the window and on the bed in this room. And we're going to be spending a little bit of time or some members of our crew are going mm -hmm. to be spending some time out in the grounds. Correct. Uh, how long are they going to be spending time out there and what in? <laughs> um, we've got a couple of tents, so if they get a bit cold they can nip in. How long they're going to be out there for is up to them how scared they're going to get, actually. With the grounds just as haunted as the castle, we had decided to place the two tents on top of the plague burial grounds. from that to that. <laughs> Ta <-da! laughs> As night descended upon the castle, it seemed to take on a more sinister look. Would our medium, Derek Akora, pick up on the supposed negative energy that's thought to surround the castle? Our starting place was right at the top, the battlements. Oh, yes. This is what was um, linking with me before. Um... That's it. Okay. <laughs> and she's... It's like her energy comes all around, like this. And she's flicking her skirt up like this. And it's a young, 
a girl, a young lady, but you know, it's like as if she goes into this dance frenzy and she shoots across and she's just full of happiness and she's humming and singing and, you know, she's so oblivious to things and suddenly, and, and I just guess, and I, I'm over. She's gone over. Oh, who, bless her. Who is she? Do you, do you know who, who she are, is? Who is it, Sam? What's her name? Can you get me a name? It was just before her birthday, before her 14th birthday. She didn't make 14 of years. Keris, Keris, the young lady, Keris. She had her hair tied back and the tails, and she was so, so light on her feet. She dances up here regularly. Wow. She comes back, she's not resident. She's happy because she knows she's going back to the light. Right. And she's got no fears, but she will not, she will not go down on the lower level. She's got this apprehension, even though she's a spirit child or a spirit girl, when she lost her physical life, because it seems as if, even though she's a spirit person, she has fear for the lower levels. Can you give us a surname with Keris? See if you can get me a surname, please. It sounds like either Pelain or Pican. Which one is it, Sam? Pitcairn. Pitcairn. She said, always fear John. Fear John. Right. And no, 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 she, no, she does not like the name John. So she obviously had a connection with John. Yes. She does not like the name John. Mm-hmm. OK. Mr John. Right. Mr John. Okay. I don't know, was he an uncle or something? What was he to her? He was the evil one. John. He was no, yes, mm. he was known um, as the evil one. Mm. Even with his family members, <coughs> he was protected. Mm. We're protected, Sam, by what? OK, go down, go down into the energy. Right. And it will be opened up. OK. OK? Right. Let's go down. Oh, bless her. We, we don't have to rescue that little soul. She comes and goes She's as she right. pleases. Bless her. So many people have witnessed the ghost of the little girl who seemed to be a happy soul, but would the most haunted crew come up against a more sinister soul downstairs? Even though Pengursic Castle is quite small, it's said there are dozens of ghosts that haunt the rooms and gardens. Many murders were committed here, and one of the victims was a monk. Would Derek pick up on his energy and any of the other spirits down in the solar room? I'm getting um, conditions here. OK, all right, I see oh him. Oh, my I see God! Him. OK, <laughs> it's all right. It's OK. I've got someone just come in now, just this moment here, and he's garbed and what have you, and he's just staring at us and points down to the floor where I was there. He's over there, Phil, just where you're going now. Down here. Yeah. OK. Pointing down he's to the floor? You're pointing down here, like oh, that. Right. It's as if he's trying to guide us for some reason here. Um, yes, he doesn't belong here. He's come in. He's come in to show. He's come in to sh show. Um, yes. <clears throat> there was a murder here. There was definitely a murder here. And the life's blood on the floor. And some, it's a man. But also, look what's coming now again. Look, um, I've got... Um, a, a little boy now. A little boy. How old? Uh, oh, three, three and a half, oh. maybe four, you know. But he cut and he looks so thin and drawn. Oh. And it's like as if he's, a cust he's accompanied, he's been drawn in by this monk figure uh, who I'm not picking um, anything um, negative about. The little boy runs down the stairs. He wants to be noticed, he wants to be seen. Does he have a name? Sam, can you give me a name, please? Jamie, James. It's either Jamie, James, Godolphin, Godolph, Godolphin, Godolphin, Jamie, Godolphin. Ja <gasps> oh. He choked, he choked, oh. he choked. You right? Yes, yeah, he choked. Oh, 
on my head. It's banging. This person. Um, I'm sorry, but can we just have a little quick break, please? Something Sam's new. warning me um, over something here. Well, we've actually just lost Richard Felix. <laughs> have you? He's actually what? ran outside coughing and spluttering, so oh. um, let's stop now. For, let's have a. Our investigation was interrupted by Richard Felix, our historian. It seemed very strange that as Derek described the choking of a little boy, Richard felt that he couldn't breathe and had to leave the room. I was standing in there, I thought, yeah. oh, I'm going to cough. Yeah. I need to get out. And then yeah. all of a sudden, the whole, and the whole of my throat, <sighs> I got phlegm, yeah. eyes were running, and I couldn't stop coughing. This is the, this is the dead <sighs> energy coming That in. was so, so bad. Honest to God, it was as you yes. said, the choking, yeah. boy choking. I'm like, yeah. mate, such a fool of myself in there. Need yes. to get out. I can't start stop coughing mm -hmm. while you're filming. Yeah. And then the whole thing, I couldn't even get down the stairs. Mm. Oh, well, God. it's good that you got out because it would that have was bloody more. funny. That was. Yeah. It'd be all right. <coughs> 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 Everyone sit down. It's the poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. I've never felt anything like that before. No, ever. No. After a short break, we went up to the bedroom where many people have witnessed ghost sightings, including a red eyed dog which stands by the fireplace. The, you know, the first impressions as we come into this energy, I'm drawn, would you believe it, away from this side um, of this room, this bedroom, to this area of this mirror. Mm -hmm. And you know, it seems as if. There's a lady, a young lady, who often is in visitation here. In actual fact, thank you, I'm aware now of two ladies, two young ladies. One, the one who goes to the mirror that makes things happen around that mirror and that chair area um, physically, although she's in the spirit body. She was slain in this room. And, you know, to watch and laugh this evil soul as, you know, seeing her life's blood drain from especially the head area. Oh, just horrible. But I'm also, I'm also aware of another female who was also, her life was taken away from her in this room. And the separate person, the spiritual impression of the second young lady, um, and it's like as if she's in a lying position um, I feel, bless her, a good soul, but she, she's not perfected, but she realises she is getting a reaction. So I feel at times maybe when people walk in this bedroom here, um, a form of a lady has got to be seen here. She was slain, there's no two ways about it, but in a different manner to the first. How was she slain? I feel that she was, um, she was stabbed, you know, wounds. Who? Say it again. There. Can we just... Ivy, um, Philip, look. What? Right there. This fireplace. Yeah. This, if we would call it entity, um, is a... To the eye, is a, a soul that really comes from the lowest regions of the spirit realms and would have been summoned, if you like, through the evil intent of this evil man this man who practised alchemy, he was an alchemist. The name is John. He went the wrong way. He went the opposite way, the negative way, the black arts. What sort of, what sort of form would you say that, he, that this... This really would um, take the form, if a person was to see this monstrosity, would see probably a very, very, very small form crouched and also very sharp features. Have you just felt something? Did you just feel that? Yeah, I thought it was one of you guys. No, I thought mm. it was you. No. Yeah, Did you this... just go like this? No, but I heard it, I thought it was you guys. Did no. you move your feet and go no, like that? No, I'm on the carpet. Did anybody else hear that? No. Yeah, I, I just, heard the just shuffle. There. Just there? Yes. I seriously thought it was you moving no, your feet. No, I didn't, I had mm. both my feet. Did you hear it then? Yeah, I heard it. Mm. But we, we weren't moving. Like floorboard or something. Yeah. Maybe it's because we're talking about this, you see, now. And maybe I feel there's going to be a build-up here tonight, this evening. I'm not really looking forward to hear that, that again. You? Yeah, that was me. That, that was definitely, that was <laughs> Moved. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this there. is the energy, yes. I felt the floor move that time. Yeah. 
Now, it's listening. It's listening, OK? And I would just say this thing, really, that shouldn't even be in this atmosphere is grounded best part of the time with this evil man. You know, if he was here now, although he's not shown himself yet, the demon link is, but I would say these words, I would challenge him. John Militon! Mm -hmm. John Militon! We speak to you! If you dare come into the atmosphere and show yourself, you weak spirit, you won't go to the light because you know what awaits you. Yes. Don't die. He's angry. Thank you, Sam. He's angry. He's angry. It's John. It's John. John Mildred. Keep seeing stuff floating across. Yes. Yeah, this could be the um the, you know, the conditions. Like, um, you know, like cobwebs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just very fine. Just... Yeah. There is a number of souls that are here active up and down this building, not always coming in at the same time. But it could be anything like 15, 16, 17. I don't know, maybe 18 individual spirits. Is there any way you want to go outside in the grounds? I'd love to, actually. Yeah, where do you I want really to go? I really would. I would like to go up. I, I, as I could, it's like a hill effect, isn't mm -hmm. that? I'll know where it is as okay. I go walk, and if that's then. OK. Yeah, let's, yeah? let's do it. OK. It was time to venture outside to the grounds. This was no ordinary garden. Buried treasure, remains of an old church and plague burial grounds are just a few things that have been connected to the castle. We were all very keen for Derek to hopefully encourage something paranormal to occur so we could catch it on our night vision cameras. It's like as if I'm being drawn um, to unconsecrated ground. Right. Unconsecrated. Where is it? All this area. These souls are walking and coming into the atmosphere and walking through this area. These souls that are buried. You know, we're talking about a lot of souls. And I feel that spiritual phenomena, sightings, um, and a lot of things would be happening away from this main building out here. Um, it's like we've got two sections of these burials. And one is most definitely souls that were, you know, uh, classified, dealing with the black arts mm -hmm. and witchcraft. Yes, they were slain and in the ground, and it's got to be unconsecrated and what have you. But there was another group of people who, you know, steadily lost their lives um, that I, I, I just feel didn't have anything to do with the witchcraft and the black mm -hmm. arts. And for some reason, because I'm drawn back to it, this area where I talked about, the uh, like at the chapel, mm -hmm. things went on there. Right. That were covered up. That's what I'm getting now. Right. They were covered up. And something to do, most definitely, with an altar area. Mm -hmm. An altar. Mm -hmm. Now, in churches, mm -hmm. as we all know, altars generally depict an area for a person in prayer and what have you. Now, when the vileness that I felt back there was that I'm getting two things either side of me. I'm getting that faith, but I'm also getting, like, this feeling of power and the altar being used for something the opposite to what it would be recognised to be, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be at all spiritually surprised whether there were you know, I suppose, you know, offerings mm. and things like that with, with human people. Sacrifices. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about devil worship? Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. So we had two levels of elements. We had the devil worshippers, mm -hmm. the disciples of the worshipping, and also they, the actual people who were practising witchcraft. Two separate things, but both linking with the dark side. This would in my opinion, should be blessed mm. and should be 
help to be cleansed because as years are going on now, I feel because of this area, mm -hmm. it's going to disrupt and bring out oh, of course. all the disharmony that's been housed right. under the mm -hmm. ground. Mm -hmm. And believe me, the local residents here are going to have problems. Mm. Would, you, would you say this place is active? Yes. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. And, you know, I would really, really, in thought, I would say, from what I'm picking up here, is that souls that have been involved, Dead. who were buried mm. and what have you, would have walked on a number of occasions and would be seen mm -hmm. by people experienced and noises as well. With Derek's part of the investigation over, we now knew more about the castle and its supposed spirits. Would the Most Haunted crew witness any paranormal activity? And if so, would it be inside or outside? The Whilst Derek, Phil and myself and Carl, our photographers, sat in the solar room, other members of the crew had decided to sit it out in the tents, which are positioned on top of the plague burial grounds. Kath, our makeup lady, and Victoria, our production manager, were in one tent, whilst our two brave cameramen, Rick and Craig, sat in the other. Basically, we, um, I was up here with Phil when he pitched this tent uh, with a vet earlier. He says, pitched on graves where there are dead people on the yeah. okay. oh, is So uncomfortable. For some bizarre reason, <coughs> zipping up this tent makes me feel slightly more secure. Oh, my God. I don't know if it's because of the anxiety of all this, but I do feel sick. Do you? Yeah. I feel sick to the stomach. I'm, I think because we're on our own and up here, I'm scared to, to sort of speak and try and get... Oh, God. Right, so we're in the solar room and apparently there's been activity <coughs> in, in here. Anything on there? Oh, Christ. Put the hobs of God there. Is there anything, feeling anything, Derek, in this room? Not at the moment, no. What's that noise? That sounds more like footsteps. Oh, God. Oh, it's unclosed at all. Mm. Oh. I'm going to do something <laughs> now that I didn't think I'd ever do whilst being in a tent in the middle of the woods on the grave. If there's anybody here who wishes to make contact with us, please make a noise. Shake the tent. Do anything. This tent moves. Can't be out of here. I think we should try and speak to people. No, I don't. Nip at all. We're, we're here. On our own. No, if anything happened, we wouldn't know how to deal with it, would we? No. I wouldn't. I think I might have just passed out. Mm. According to Derek, we, there are screams and um, earthly noises heard here. If you can show us something along those lines. What was that? What? That was the door. Again. That's the door on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Did you hear the, like, the metal oh. of the clat? Um, the clat, the clat. Mm -hmm. Shh, 
Well, bugger me. It's just open. It's open? Yeah. Yeah. Twice. Okay, let's close it again. Yeah, that was open. So we hit. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that was open. So we hit. That was not wind. No. So we've got an energy here with us right now. Okay. I feel this is John. At last, you're playing round with us now, and you want to show us, do you? Well, I don't believe. I can't believe that door. Let's have a look at it. Okay. There's no wind to cause that of it. Let's just leave it as okay, it is. Put the class down now. Yes, down. Oh. We were there and it just slammed across, didn't it? Frightened us, didn't it? Frightened us all. We all jumped, didn't we, yeah. when that door went? Only for you only because it was done so quick. Yeah. There's an awful lot of movement outside. But it's really windy, isn't it? it? Seems to be picking up. I think we should try a little steam of having the light off. Ready? <gasps> Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> No, it's that it's the door flapping in the wind. Sort of felt really anxious there. I did, isn't it amazing what it makes how what difference it makes, the light. Let's close our eyes and So far, nothing, mm -hmm. apart from the door that slammed downstairs. It went from open to being closed, which was odd. Really is a waiting game, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> that door incident, um, without a doubt, that was um, shifted open and then closed very quickly, very loudly and tight. Now, again, it could be attributed to our evil individual that is around this home. Probably that's a sordid mentality. Oh, my God. What have you seen? Lovely orb. Really lovely and slow moving. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard something. Yeah. I heard something. Yeah. So I pointed the camera. I feel that there's something over there, Derek. I don't know why. Do you? Yeah, but... Maybe, maybe if there's going to be movement, it'll come and show itself, won't it? Oh, what was that? Do you see something again? Yeah, sure. I think I've seen a flashy light. There's nothing out there, I'm telling you. You've just seen me shove the camera out there as fast as I could. Torches on, everything. There is nothing out there. If there's anybody outside of the tent, just make some kind of a noise, but don't harm us. I know that you oh don't. God. That is definitely. There was definitely footsteps out there then. 
Even weirder. Oh my god, yeah, that was slip. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's outside? <laughs> Does that mean? Okay, that was the walkie talkie, by the way. So you look like I can really hear something. Can you hear that, like? Somebody walking through trees every now and again. Yeah, behind, behind, behind us. It is, that's to the right behind. Now we are joined together here, collectively. We can only ask and ask with humility for your humble contact in whatever manner you wish to display. We are aware of your energies. We are ready and awaiting your contact. Right, we're going to leave the tent now. But I have to say, we've been lying down for a couple of minutes now. Um, and is it my imagination, or has everything stopped? Everything has stopped. I feel very there is, calm. There is no... We're not tents anymore. There is no rusting outside. So I'm beginning to think that maybe that was something. Maybe. Right, well, let's go outside and see yeah, what we can do. Uh, Where's the torch? In all honesty, though, what could have been rustling out here? It's all wet. I know. The stuff that went on in the tent before me, maybe put it down. I very much doubt it was paranormal, but it was scary. It was scary. Um, we're outside now, there doesn't really appear to be much going on. I mean, it's all... If there is anybody here in these woods with us, any sort of a presence of a monk, a lady, of a little girl. Make a noise, a rattling noise. Rustle some bushes, anything. <laughs> well, I know that's the wind. Yeah, having said that, it is the biggest gust of wind we've had all evening. So all in all, we were a little disappointed with our evidence at Pengersig Castle. We did, however, manage to catch the light anomaly and the castle door shutting on its own. So we had... Other investigations had been carried out during the night, but again, all was quiet, and our photographer Carl had caught nothing on his camera. But just as Rick and Carl thought their 24-hour stint was over, at 5.40 a.m., they got the fright of their lives. Oh. We're actually sitting in my car now. Now it's 20 to 6 in the morning. And it's pitch black. Basically what just happened, to <sighs> analyse it a little bit, we've, we walked from the kit room to 
the uh, to the castle to put some uh, cameras on a, uh, in lock-off positions. Now Rick said he felt something. He, he thought something was behind us. When we actually opened the door to the castle, or when we went to close it, you just heard something run. Someone just ran up here. Span around, and there's just nothing there. Nothing at all. I can't stop shaking. That has just freaked me out more than anything I've ever seen in my life. <sighs> Hopefully we've got the noise on tape. And, and I screamed. <laughs> Rick doesn't normally scream. My expectations um, have been fulfilled because really for the first time something actually happened to me and um, while we were upstairs uh, with Derek the very moment that he mentioned um, someone choking that's more or less what started to happen to me and I've never felt anything quite like it before there's a lot and has been a lot of spiritual activity all on the different floors of this building but the vast majority of visitations of these spirit people who fortunately enough are not grounded with these two evil things. When he came out with the name John Militant and the connections to the alchemy and the black arts I was quite surprised at that because um, I, I don't think it's very well known fact. When a vet, myself and Phil got onto the stairwell and we saw directly in front of us the door ajar and then suddenly the door being brought tight and hammer and closed. <laughs> now that was most definitely, in my opinion, John. I feel he did actually do that. Cornwall is a place of myths and legends and um, its fame spread throughout the world. Even in Italy, um, when stories were being told as we started them with once upon a time, they started them with, and there was once a castle in Cornwall. I wonder if this is the castle they mean. The orbs in the film are very compelling. They really do make for compelling viewing in a haunted location, but could be any number of things. The first natural explanation could be dust particles and light is reflected off the dust particles from the camera or any other source and it creates this orb effect. It could be other objects like an insect for example and it could be a reflection off that. The way the orb moves in this particular film I hypothesize that it's just a dust particle. The sequence that had the footsteps in it and then the reaction from Rick, a member of the crew, screaming to the footsteps is understandable in this sort of context, this sort of environment. Uh, you'd have to check to make sure that there were no animals around that could have caused those footsteps. For example, cats or maybe something bigger, nocturnal animal like a badger or something like that. Oh, yeah. In this particular clip, there are two tents pitched on a plague burial ground. Both groups are getting very, very scared. And that's because of, on the first hand, suggestion. They're pitched on a plague burial ground. Of all the places you could put somebody, that would be a very, very scary place to have pitch a tent and in the middle of the night as well. Also, because they're with somebody else, the fear is playing off each other, almost like a, a group conformity thing. I'll tell you what, I can really hear something. Can you hear that, like somebody walking through? trees every now and again. Yeah, behind us. Well, Pengasit Castle has the ghost sightings and it has the history. It's certainly been a very interesting 24-hour investigation. Until the next time, sleep time.
Why don't we open the tent? Stay in the tent, don't get out and don't run. We keep hearing strange noises around the tent. 